Hello! In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to get started with the MSP430 G2 Launchpad and Energia. This launchpad is the original model and also the first to support Energia. This launchpad is an excellent entry-level development board with decent capabilities for your projects. The MSP430 G2 series microcontroller has the popular 16-bit low-power MSP430 core architecture, a PDIP package for easy breadboarding and through-hole soldering, and runs at a clock speed of 16 MHz. The MSP430 G2 is a basic microcontroller with limited memory performance and peripherals, but easy to work with for simple projects. For this example, all we'll need is the MSP430 G2 launchpad. Now let's get started. First, plug your launchpad to your computer over USB. For our hardware setup, we will want to check on a few things. You can refer to the MSP430 G2 hardware guide on the Energia website for the most complete details on hardware setup. There are several versions of this board with minor differences, so make sure you are handling your version correctly. The first thing you want to make sure is the jumpers match the default factory positions. Wrong jumper placement can cause unexpected results. For revision 1.5 of this launchpad, you can choose hardware or software UART, so please make sure they are oriented appropriately for hardware UART. You also want to make sure the board is receiving power over the USB cable. This is indicated by the green power indicator LED at the top of the launch pad. Now we're ready to move on to the software. Make sure you've downloaded and installed the drivers so your computer can communicate with the launch pad over USB. You can find the drivers and instructions for your operating system on the Energia MSP430 G2 hardware guide. In some cases, drivers are not required. Next, let's open up Energia. Make sure we select our board and COM port by going to Tools, Board, MSP430 G2553 16 MHz, and Tools, Serial Port. Note, there are several MSP430 G2 devices supported, so if you're using one different from the 2553, you can select the appropriate one. If you don't see a Serial Port option available, there is likely a problem with your driver installation. Go back through the setup instructions to correct the error. Go ahead and run a blink example to ensure the hardware is functioning properly. We will import an existing code example by going to File, Examples, Basics, Blink. Click the download button and make sure your red LED is blinking. If the LED is successfully blinking, your hardware is correctly set up and you are ready to move on to your project. If you run into trouble, go back carefully through the setup instructions to resolve the issue. Now let's try out the push button on our launch pad. We will import an existing code example by going to File, Examples, Basics, Digital Read Serial. This is a good example because it teaches us how to use the onboard push button, how to use the Energia pin maps to identify pin locations, and how to use the serial monitor in Energia. The first thing we want to do is change the push button variable to the correct pin for our launch pad. We can find this information by going to the pin map of our launch pad on the Energia website. We see that the bottom left button is called Push2. We can use this alias, or we can also call the pin number directly using P1 underscore 3, or analog pin A3, or the Energia pin number 5. Note, even though the pins have a period separator on the board silkscreen and datasheet, in Energia we use underscore for the variables because the period character is reserved for special functions in C. We can see all the pins are labeled in the map and color coded by function. Use these pin names in your Energia code to interact with peripherals attached to the pins. If we go back to our sketch in the setup function, we start our serial communication with serial.begin. In this function, we indicated the baud rate that we want our communication to have. Make sure this baud rate matches the baud rate of your serial monitor, otherwise you will not receive the data properly. It is important to note that on the MSP430 G2553, the maximum baud rate supported is 9600. We also want to use pin mode to set our push button as input pull-up. In the loop function, we use digital read to get the state of the push button, and then we print that over serial. And that's it. Make sure we change the pin for the push button, press the verify and download button, and then open up the serial monitor by clicking the magnifying glass in the upper right corner of Energia. The serial monitor will display data that is sent over the USB cable from your launch pad to your computer. This is excellent for debugging what is happening in your code. Again, make sure your baud rate in the serial monitor matches what is in your sketch so you can properly receive data. If you still don't see any data, make sure you select the COM port for UART. You can verify the COM port in your computer's device manager. We see a stream of data that indicates the state of the push button. When we press the button, it should change the value between 1 and 0. Now you're ready to move on to the Energia tutorials or begin working on your next project. 
Refer to the Energia website for documentation and project ideas. Good luck!